Welcome to Stupid Muslim Comments. This video series presents some of the amazingly stupid comments by Muslims on YouTube. Here are this week's top 5 picks. This week's comments are read to you by UWM Big B. Thank you again for your contribution. Check out his channel and videos here and don't forget to subscribe. One last announcement before we dive into this week's list. I need your help. My collection of stupid YouTube comments is getting low, especially of the Muslim variety. Don't get me wrong, there are tons of stupid comments to choose from, however many of them are very similar to each other, and I want to keep the series fresh. If you see a stupid comment, send me a private message with a link to the YouTube video where I can find it. Your help will keep this series going. And now, without any further ado, we start this week off with a double comment from Madian Attar who said, Hey, love your channel and I subscribed. I'm an Arab atheist, and the translation of the Adnan Akhtar is right. How do you explain this? How did Muhammad, if he exists, knew that the world is expanding? Please reply to this, another scientific fact. Let me think a lot about Islam, especially when my believer friends ask this question. How Muhammad knew that? And by the way, I'm not an atheist converting to Muslim. I'm a Muslim who is converted to Islam. That's why I ask these questions. I'm very disappointed by your reply. I thought you were intelligent. Maybe you should start stupid atheist comment. Did you catch that? Madia Natar here states that he is an Arab atheist, and then preceding comments states that he is a Muslim. I've seen this kind of behavior from other Muslims on YouTube before. They approach you with fake compliments, informing you that they are just like you, a non-believer, and then spend the rest of their time telling you that the Quran has some serious claims that need to be addressed. This is bullshit. When I responded to his comments, he folded and admitted to being a Muslim. Lying is permitted and even encouraged in Islam, especially if it's believed to be helping the religion. Known inaccurately as takia, which is defined as lying to save a Muslim's life. However, this strict definition has been interpreted more broadly into a, an open commandment to lie where it suits a Muslim and the conversion of other Muslims. Any worldview that actively encourages lying is fundamentally flawed. Would you trust anyone you know who is a compulsive liar? Shows you the strength of their beliefs if they have to lie in order to gain converts. Muslims aren't the only ones to lie about their beliefs. I've seen Christians do this as well. I'm sure you've heard Christian apologists claim that they used to be atheists and skeptics and now they are believers on a mission for Jesus. I seriously doubt that any of them were really atheists at any point of their life, with the exception of infancy. If your reasons to believe in your God or religion is so strong, then why resort to lies? Up next is Ahmed Sahir, who shows his true colors with That bastard was dying from cancer then, and now his ass is burning in the fire. LOL. And now he know God is real. I'm happy this cancer-ridden devil is now burning in the fire of hell, where man neither die nor lives. And what an evil bed to lay on. Let me provide some context. Ahmed Sahir is commenting on the late Christopher Hitchens, who died in 2011 from cancer. This visceral hatred for an open critic of Islam and religion in general is common in the Muslim world. Sure, not all Muslims feel this way, but it would appear that a large majority hold beliefs that are very hostile to any criticism. Look at the jump to violence over cartoon images depicting Muhammad, or the burning of the Quran, or the release of a horrible movie entitled Innocence of Muslims. What about the treatment, death threats, and murder attempts of apostates such as Ayan Hirsi Ali, Ibn Warwick, Sir Salman Rushdie and many others. Some moderate Muslims will say that they don't believe in violence and that their beliefs are more civilized than the people we see on the media bombing embassies and civilians. But as recently seen at the Muslim Peace Conference in Norway in October of this year, supposed moderate Muslims believe that women and men should be segregated, that the punishments in the Quran for apostates, homosexuality and everything else disapproved of is correct and the best possible course of action. With or without religion, you have good people doing good things and evil people doing evil things. But for good people to do evil things, that takes religion. Steven Weinberg Alif Kadar Muhammad Bashar comes next with Homosexuality is against Islam, and it is a practice that indicates that people dislike Allah and his creation, as well as the order that is how creation is fashioned. Homosexuality is not against anyone. It is the expression of love two people of the same sex have just the same as heterosexual couples. Religions the world over have always been focused on sex and what's approved and what is not. Everything from contraception, male and female genital mutilation, abortion, homosexual relationships, the institution of marriage, and divorce 
Religions just can't keep their nose out of the bedroom and away from the genitalia. What two consenting adults do in private is nobody's business, and it's because religions like Islam and Christianity stick their noses in that causes so much bigotry and violence. If Allah exists, he created everyone as they are, gay, straight, bisexual, or transgendered. What kind of God creates beings whose very nature he has issues with and then punishes them for eternity for loving others? Our fourth comment comes from Super Lameo, who thinks the following is convincing proof. You see the mountains and think them firmly fixed, but they shall pass away as the clouds pass away. 2788. The Quran speaks very clearly about the movement of the mountains, whereas we see them as immovable, and the analogy of their movement with that of the clouds is both an indication of their calmness and quietude. If we see that instead of the movement of the earth, the movement of the mountains is mentioned because it is clear that the mountains without the earth would have no motion. This is... Oh my God, quick, everyone, convert to Islam. The Quran makes a claim that mountains seem fixed, but they shall pass away like clouds. Damn, this book must be true then, right? Please, want to impress me? Find the passage in your Quran where it explains in full detail how tectonic plates collide and crumble to form mountains. Vague passages that could be interpreted in many different ways, none of which, scientifically, are not impressive in the slightest. You know what book specifically talks about mountain formation in full detail without the need of heavy-handed interpretation? A high school geography textbook. What is with theists wanting to demonstrate that their holy books contain information that was beyond the time it was written? Did you come to your religious beliefs because of this supposed revelation? Or were you brought up in it and now you want to convert others and you know you need to convince the infidels? Christians do the same thing, making claims about supposed miracles, fulfilled prophecies, and abiogenesis. And wrapping up the list this week is a comment from Mazda K Production with The Persian word for God is self-creation. Islam at its core represents God as the universe itself and all within it. So when religions like Islam say God created the universe, it really means the universe is self-creating. So if the definition of God is the universe, then atheism by definition is an oxymoron. Unless you are able to argue that you or yourself don't even exist, then atheism is shut down upon inception. Okay, so the universe is God, and God is the universe. We already have a label for the universe. Why do we need to label it God as well? What does adding God do to our understanding of the universe? Where are you getting this information from, and how have you confirmed that it's not utter nonsense? Stating that God is the universe, and everything within it, is not evidence of anything other than more baseless religious assertions. I don't care what you believe, I care why you think it's correct, and how you came to conclude that your beliefs are correct and all other competing beliefs are false. I don't define God as the universe, so I reject your assertion that atheism is oxymoronic. Checkmate. There you have it, five stupid comments from five different YouTubers. Which comment would you vote to win the Dumbass of the Week award? Would it be, one, Madia Natar who thinks that lying for Islam is justifiable, two, Ahmed Sahir, who shows his visceral hatred for anyone who criticizes his beliefs. 3. Alif Kadar Muhammad Bashir, who thinks that homosexuality is against Islam and evidence of a dislike of Allah. 4. Super Lameo, who thinks that vague passages in the Quran are evidence of mountain formation. Or 5. Mazda K Production thinks that God is the universe and therefore atheism is oxymoronic. Please leave your votes and comments below, and if you enjoyed this video, remember to press the like button and share. If you would like to submit a video or audio reading of an upcoming stupid comment, send me a private message. Thanks for watching. Want to see more? Click subscribe and keep an eye out for the next stupid comments video coming out next Friday. Follow me on my brand new Facebook, Twitter, and Google Plus pages. Links are in the description. Lastly, head over to my channel and check out all the debates, presentations, and videos.